All right, so the next thing we're doing is we are going to bring in the SVG file we saved. It's right here. And we're going to drag and drop it into our pixel space in PhotoP. And I'm going to review that again. You open up PhotoP and you say new project. This will be for every assignment. We're going to do all three really quick that you want to print for your midterm critique. If your black logo is done, this can be one of them. If it's not, use other three assignments, but you do it this way. I'm going to call it Carl Midterm Critique. And I'm going to call it one. It's going to be eight or 10 inches by eight inches by 350 because my logo's landscape format. And then I'm going to drag and drop my SVG onto it. Okay, now I'm going to turn on the camera on my laptop so you can see. This is what a matted piece for the midterm might look like. Right? Notice that it's got a black mat around it. All of these are standard. They are sold as being 11 inches by 14 inches. This would be landscape format. On the outside, the inside window, which is what we care about, is sold as 10 inches by 8 inches or 8 by 10 inches. But in actuality, they, they undercut it by half an inch or overcut it by half an inch. So it's actually seven and a half inches by nine and a half inches. The paper we print on is letter size, eight and a half by 11 inches. So you can see the overlap so that we can tape them into the mats. And that's how matting works. So when I look at PhotoP and I'm arranging my vector I want you to think of this black background in PhotoP as your mat and this white rectangle that's 8 by 10 as the inside window of your mat. So you need to size it so that it looks good within that space, not going too close to the edge because it's an extra quarter inch that's going to be cropped in from 8 by 10. So what does that mean? Well, it means I take my in PhotoP, you know these skills, these are your compositing skills. I grow my image without distorting it, and I place it where I think it would look good in the mat. And then I hit return. And that's all there is to it. Now I have it formatted for 8 by 10 by 350. Now if I want to add color to it, which is the next requirement, I'm going to make a duplicate. But before that, how do I submit it for Canvas? in the format that's actually requested, which is a PNG, I turn off the background and then I save it. I export it as a PNG. That goes to my downloads. This is the first file of my vector that I put into Canvas. And it's better than the JPEG out of Vector.com because it doesn't have that white background. It will take whatever background it floats on, which is why you would use it for a website. You would use it for layout, uh, for anything electronic, so that the background will come through for the bottom of a poster, that kind of thing. Okay, next, the next requirement is to add color. If we look at the assignment, these are the three requirements. Your refined sketch, your black shape logo, and a color variation. So, so far I've posted a JPEG because that's what I could get from vector.com. But what I actually want to post to show I can fully control and save it as a vector is I want to post it not as a JPEG, but as a PNG. And I exported it first as a JPEG from Vector.com at 3,000 pixels wide, then used Adobe Illustrator to image trace it and erase the background white. And I know there's more steps than that. So after you have made it into a vector, into an SVG file, right, AIEPS, then you bring it into PhotoP, 
and drag and drop it in so that it's a smart object vector. And then you save that as a PNG so you don't have a background. And then I'm going to post that. And now I can talk about adding color. So many different ways I can do that, right? All right, so now I'm in PhotoP. I've got it floating as a smart object. The first thing I'm going to do is duplicate it, Command J. So now I have two copies of my smart object vector SVG. Next, I'm going to double click on that one on top to open up layer styles. And we've played with this before. If you remember using vector tools in PhotoP, adding gradients, adding um, drop shadows. The most basic way to color a logo that's a black shape logo is to just fill it with a different color. And you use color overlay for that. So I click it, and then I can choose the color I want. So if I want to fill it with red, there I go. If I want to fill it with, these are all under the layer options. I kind of like that yellow. Ooh, it looks like a luxury clothing brand. So that's really simple, but that is a color variation. Okay, if I want to get more complex than that, the next thing I would play with is gradient overlay. But in order to see the gradient overlay, I have to turn off the color overlay, but it will remember my settings. So the default in PhotoP for gradient overlay is just a white to black. So to play with that, I can change that black to white, white to black to any other colors. So maybe I like the black, but I want to change the white to a bright orange. Let's do something like that, right on the edge of orange. And then maybe I want to change the scale of it so that black is really just towards the edge. And maybe I want to put a different color in the middle. Maybe I put a redder orange right in the middle. Maybe I put a black or a dark brown somewhere in it. And then I can play with these scalings until I'm happy with those color variations. I can also reverse them. So I can say OK. Then I can reverse their order. And I kind of like that. And at any time, I can keep adjusting them. And I can even set it at an angle. Right now, it's at 90 degrees. But I can set it to be slightly angled like that or like this. I think that kind of fits the logo. Now, all of it is on an effect as a drop down menu to that layer. So they can be turned off at any time and they can be turned on. So if I take this color overlay now, the yellow, I can just use it to, to kind of glaze over and average them out. So now I have that kind of gold color on top of everything. Or I can use different blending modes to really mess with it. So I get this really subtle very expensive looking color variation. Other things I can play with are things like texture. Let me zoom in and show you what that does. You can pick the texture you want. The default is this pinwheel. Yeah, it can. And you can play with, if you don't want it to be recognizable as pinwheels, you can make it really small like this. So it just becomes like a textured paper. And then you can play with its height or depth. I'm going to make it really subtle, but you'll see it rounds out my edges a little bit. And now I've got the gradient and the texture. And then I can also add other effects just by double clicking, like a drop shadow. I can play with the features of the drop shadow, like how it spreads out, how opaque it is. I can even play with the color of the drop shadow, though I think that's a little fussy. Because we're still just trying to communicate the basic shape of our logo. And we're going to do this more when we do type design, when we're doing poster layout. These layer styles give us a lot of options. You can play with satin, which if I use to lighten, can give me kind of additional effects. It just depends. So you play with these. 
because I'm getting kind of a satiny effect from it already. All right, now, once you're happy with your color variation, you are going to turn off your background, save that as a PNG with a different name. So I'm gonna export it under File, Export as PNG, but this time I'm gonna call it my color logo. So these PNGs that I'm saving, I can then put to my desktop. These are, these are the requirements for assignment four. And then I can load them, post them to Canvas under assignment four. And as long as you have your refined sketch, your black logo as a PNG, and your color logo, then you have all the requirements. So requirement three, and after this, we're going to do the presentations. This is your finished color vector. And you don't need to do all of the stuff with the SVG because we're doing it from the vector file. As a layer in PhotoP. And now in that way with layer styles, you can have infinite variations of your black shape vector. All right, so now let's use that same technique and just save it for ourselves. I'm going to save this now as a PSD, right? Save as PSD. This is not midterm critique one anymore. This is assignment four. And this is the black and color logo. Because I have the SVG as a smart object in it, I could use this same file to make that logo either in black or in color to any size we need. All right. Okay, we just saved our color logo with no background as its own PNG. And it doesn't need to be super fancy color. It just needs to be something other than black, right, to be a variation. And then we posted that to Canvas. And if you have those three things, your refined sketch, your black-shaped PNG, and then your color PNG, you're good for assignment four. But that's not all we're doing today. We're also getting ready for printing, right? So we got to print one of these if, if you did finish your logo and two other artworks from the class. So while we're in PhotoP, let's make everything else print ready. The first question, if you have your logo, is do you want to print your color one or your black one? So you guys decide for me, which one should I print? This color one or this black one? All right, so we're gonna do the color one. So what I do now to make it print ready is I'm gonna save this with a different name. So I'm going to do save as PSD, and I'm going to call this Carl Midterm Critique 1. I'm going to save it to my desktop, and I'm going to organize my files so that I don't confuse my assignment 4 ones for my midterm ones. Because print files are different than working files. Print files are what are called archive formats because you're done with it. So what do I need to do? I need to open up my folder, go to assignment four, and I need to put my finished files in there. My PNGs, my PSD, I'm gonna mark my PSD as green. That has all my options in it. Now, I'm gonna go in my folder, I finished with assignment four, mark it green, and I'm gonna do a new type of folder, and this is my midterm critique prints. How many do I need? Three. And I'm going to mark this gray because I don't use gray very often, right? And now I have this midterm critique PSD. It is open in PhotoP right now. We do not print from PSD files for lots of different reasons. Instead, we have to flatten it now. 
layer flattened image.